We're Pastor Jerry and Julie Jenkins, Addiction Free in Christ, a Ministry of Miracles, a ministry without walls and boundaries. In fact, it's a threefold ministry. First of all, helping people receive salvation through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Secondly, helping people receive deliverance from the slavery of addiction. And thirdly, helping people receive healing in their spirit, mind, soul, and body. And this is the word for the week. Well, the word for this week is what to do when you do not know what to do. Whoa, have you ever been there? Mm -hmm. You wonder what to do when you did not know what to do? Well, that's what we're going to be looking at today. So, first of all, Julie, what does this say? What, well, what many does... people go through, the, through this not knowing what to do. Uh, a situation will come up in their life and they don't know what to do to address it. And it takes them to knowing not what to do about what they need to do. Well, this is nothing new. We find that many people had the same problem in the Bible. Probably the first and greatest mistake was done in Genesis, the second chapter in the Garden of Eden, when Eve was tempted by the devil to eat of the forbidden fruit. Yeah, what to do when you know not what to do. Yeah, uh -huh. you see, she knew she wasn't supposed to do it. That's right. You see, the temptation was so great yes. that she didn't know what to do about what she should do. Well, we still go through that today with many people. The temptation is so great. Yes. They do something they know not to do. Yes, Amen? Yes, that's right. Okay, so what? And they make the mistake of going ahead and eating the fruit, yes. which made this a problem. In Eve's case, it made a problem to all her descendants, all the children that would come after her, which uh -huh. caused an age-old problem, not knowing what to do about what I need to do. Yes, and we see that still today, don't we? Mm -hmm. Where people don't know what... To do about what they need to do, right? Yeah. Yes. And in Genesis, the 18th chapter, God told Sarah that at 80 years old, she was going to have a child. Well, Sarah definitely didn't know what to do that she needed to do. She should have said, so be it. Uh -huh. Instead, in Genesis 18, 12, she made the mistake of laughing to herself, saying, would I have the pleasure in old age of having children? And God made one of the most powerful statements in the Bible. Is anything too hard for the Lord? In we, Genesis 18, 13. We need to still remember that today. No matter what you're going through in your life, mm -hmm. is anything too hard for the Lord? There's Amen. nothing God can't do. That's right. And many times we ask, well, God, why are you letting me go through this? Well, there's a reason. And we've got to also always remember that God can always make a way where there is no way. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Because there's nothing too hard for the Lord. No. And sometimes He just lets us go through these as a testing. Amen? Yes. But they're no fun and we don't like them. So sometimes we don't know what to do about the things we need to do. That's right. right. Okay. That is right. <laughs> Others example of this is, is Jonah who ran from God when God told him to go to the Ninevites and have them repent, well, Jonah ran from God and he got on his ship and the ship started tossing and turning and everybody was frightened and they found Jonah and Jonah said, it's happening because of me, mm -hmm. because I'm running from God. And they, he said, if you throw me overboard, the, the ocean will become calm. And they did. After they tried many other things, they, they did throw Jonah overboard and a great calm came over the water and they repented and sacrificed to the Lord. But Jonah descended into the deep and was swallowed by a whale. Uh -huh. And he didn't know what to do when he didn't know what to do. <laughs> I guess he didn't. No. So, but he did the right thing by crying out to God in the belly of the whale. And you can read that in the book of John. It's a beautiful song. So what did he do? He cried out to God. Yeah, he did the right thing. Yeah, so, so when we don't know what to do, what should we do when we don't know what to do? We need to cry out to God. Right. Amen. Just like right. Jonah did. Right? right. This is a good answer for all of us when we have a situation where we don't know what to do. The answer is to stop and pray and wait for God to give us the answer. Amen. Amen. We see all this throughout the Bible where people met a challenge and they didn't know what to do. But after crying out to God, he made a way when there is no way. Uh -huh. 
So we go to Mark, yes. the fifth chapter, 25 through 30. This one I love. This is a beautiful message uh, yes. uh, that you've written here, Pastor Jerry. Mark 5, 25 through 30 talks about the lady with the issue yes. of blood. She had been to many doctors and only got worse. She did not know what to do about what she needed to do. Mm -hmm. But she said, if I could just touch, touch the, the hem of, of Jesus' garment. garment, I will be healed. And her faith told her what to do in a situation where she did not know what to do about what she needed to do. And she was healed. I want you to stop here for a minute. <clears throat> Way back many years ago, I came down with cancer. I had colon cancer. And uh, I got so bad, they took me. They was getting ready to take me to the hospital. I, I was almost dead and gone. And I remember just crying out. And I got by myself and I cried out. And I prayed and prayed, and all of a sudden, God spoke to me. And he said, you've touched the hem of my garment. And I said, what? What? And I couldn't remember it. And I looked up the lady with the issue of blood where this actually happened. Yeah. And where she cried out, and he says, you've touched, you've touched the hem of my garment. Right. Uh, and I knew that I knew that I knew I was healed. But I got worse and worse and worse. And they rushed me to the hospital. And they called my cancer doctor and they said, this man's dying. He's almost dead and gone. And my cancer doctor ran into the room. i never forget that. And he ran over to me and I couldn't even hard. I couldn't talk. Right. I was just going. Right. And he said, I remember him saying this, man, man, how are you? And I could barely whisper. And I said, I've, I've, I've touched the hem of his garment. And he said, what? And I said, I've touched the hem of his garment. And I think it was nine days later I was out of that hospital. Yeah. You know, uh, knowing what to do when you don't know what to do. Yeah, that's a real that's, life example. Yes, it is. What does it say in Matthew? Matthew 14, 13 through 21. Yes, yeah, this is a was, good one. He was ministering to 5,000 people. Mm -hmm. And lunchtime came and, and Jesus didn't want him to send them away on a empty stomach and the disciples didn't know what to do about what they needed to do about feeding <laughs> yes. the people yes and they went to jesus with two fish and five loaves and jesus blessed them blessed the food and mm -hmm. then it multiplied and fed the five thousand yes yes but Boy. They, they went to him because they didn't know what to do about what to do which Amen. is a good parable for us because sometimes we have meager resources, but just take what you got to the Lord and he'll multiply it. Amen, amen. What, a, what's the next one? Wasn't there a wedding one time? Yeah. How about another example? And Jesus uh, was at a wedding and his mother was at the wedding too. And his, they ran out of wine. So his mother said um, to Jesus, um, because you, they didn't know what to do. You go ahead. Yeah, she didn't know what to do about what they, <laughs> they didn't know what to do, what they <laughs> needed to do. Yeah. What they needed to do, they didn't know. Yes. And so um, uh, his mother said, go to Jesus. So mother, his mother called on Jesus and asked him. He told them they have no wine. Uh -huh. uh, and so he he says, um, woman, why, why do you, this is, my time has not yet come. And I think it was an allusion to the marriage supper, wedding supper of the lamb. Sure. And in, the, in the distant future. And she she says, go ahead and do what he tells you, as my mother said to the crew there. And Jesus turned the water into wine, and they had enough not only for the wedding party, but also to sell, and the couple would be wealthy. Isn't that something? Could live off of the proceeds. Well, what to do when you don't know what to do? There's a yeah. story about uh, some the disciples out fishing, weren't they? Yeah, there's a story about disciples who were out fishing and couldn't catch any fish. Uh -huh. They didn't know what to do about what they needed to do. Yes. And they called out on Jesus to tell them the problem. Mm -hmm. And Jesus told them to put the net out for a catch. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they've done this before. But they said, okay, at your, at your word. And they caught so many fish, the boat almost sank. Yeah. And Jesus told them to do what they needed to do. And that was in Luke 5, 1 through 11. Many days in our lives, we come to this situation, don't we? Yeah. Where we don't know what to do about what we need to do. Right. Right? Right. So the Bible 
tells us something else about yeah, that. Yeah, it tells us stories we just looked at and many people in situation they didn't know what to do about what they needed to do. There was Paul who was put in prison, but yet he wrote many of the letters in the New Testament. Uh, uh, I, I got to imagine he was, time. he was beaten with rods, thrown into prison. Now yeah. this is a guy working for the Lord and he, he didn't know what to do no. about what he needed to do, did he? And no. so when he's in in the in prison, he prayed and prayed, and he wrote almost the whole New Testament while he's in the Bible. Right. Amen. Right. So that's what he needed to do. But sometimes God puts us in a situation we don't know about what we need to do about what we need to do. Amen. Right. Because we're somewhere we don't want to be. Uh, Paul wasn't too excited about being in prison. I don't. No. Think. No. So sometimes God lets us go through those things. Because he has a plan what he's going to work through us. And the same was true for John, the disciple of Jesus. Oh, yeah. Not John the Baptist, but I mean, John the Baptist also was yeah. given what to do uh, but by Jesus. But um, John, the disciple who wrote not only um, the Gospel of John, but First John, Second John, Third John, and also the Revelation. Yes. And he was given the vision on the Isle of Patmos when he was a prisoner. So that, that place, was amazing. Was oh no, <laughs> that was very miserable. Yes, it was. So but God um, used that, didn't He? Yeah. God used that to write almost the whole book of Revelation. He's got a plan, and He's working it all out for His glory. Yeah, and so when you don't know what to do, you need to just wait on God. Right. Amen. Yeah. So when a situation comes up, you need to know what to do about something you need to do. We want to encourage you with something that the Lord has shown Pastor Jerry. Mm -hmm. God spoke this to him, and he spoke yes. it to me too. First of all, the Lord has told us to stop and pray. Amen. And then he took Jerry to Isaiah 40, 28 through 31, and it says there, Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. Let's stop there for a minute. His understanding is unsearchable. He understands Mankind you. has tried everything to figure out yeah. God's wisdom. God's wisdom is unsearchable. That's right. Amen. Absolutely unsearchable. That's right. What does he do? He gives power to the weak, doesn't he? Yeah, it says he gives power to the weak and to those who have no might. He increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary and young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Let's stop there for a minute. The hardest thing for mankind to do is wait on anything. Yes. We want everything yesterday. You yes. Know, but those who wait, and God has spoke to me about this hundreds of times. I get ahead of God so many times. But those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Right. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and they shall not faint. Amen. What a beautiful word from God. But the hardest thing for mankind to do is to wait, isn't it? Yes. Because we don't want to wait on anything, do we? Yes. Because why? We live in a microwave society. That's right. Every time we turn around, that phone's going off, yeah. that cell phone. Anytime we want an answer, what do we do? We pick it up and type in what we want. Right? Yes, and that's right. That, com that cell phone and that computer will tell you anything you ever want to know. That's right. And so we trust that so many times instead, instead of, of God. Instead of the Lord. And it can be, become an idol in our lives where we absolutely where our focus is on that instead of turning it off and tuning into the Word of God, either by listening to it on your phone or your computer or by reading it. it goes we back to go back to the Word of God. It goes back to this. What to do when you do not know what to do. Right. You take your time and you pray. You take yes. your time and seek God's face. You take yes. your time and you listen for God to speak. Mm -hmm. Many times we're talking and running so fast, we can't hear God if he speaks. Yeah. Amen. But let's remember that verse again in verse 31 of Isaiah 40, which says, But those who wait upon the yes. Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. 
that you sometimes just get so far ahead of God or get so wrapped up in what you're going on today or what's going on in the world around you that you don't just stop and just wait on God mm -hmm. and just pray, God, God, I, I need help in this problem. I need an answer to this problem. I don't know what to do. And so what I need to do when I don't know what to do is turn my eyes upon you to come to you and trust in you and ask you, God, please, please help me figure out what I need to do about this situation. I don't know what to do. And so many people are like that today. We live in a microwave society and it's going so fast sometimes we just got to stop and say, Lord, help me through this. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And well, you know, if you're out there today and you need to need help in this answer, what do they need to do, Julie? Well, please call us and we will pray with you at 217-617-5577. Or you can also visit our website at addictionfreeinchrist.com. Yes. There you can see our ministry videos, our contact information, um, articles about the difference between recovery and deliverance that the Lord gives. We've got a lot of resources on our website. Also, we have our addiction seminars on our website also, yes. if you would like to watch those. But Julie, guess but, what? Well, We've run out of time. Yeah. There's some people we need to thank. We, yeah. <laughs> we have some people we'd like to thank. We would like to thank Nick Zamus of Westtown Ford Lincoln of Jacksonville, Illinois, and Andy and Jeannie Nicholson of Punta Gorda, Florida, and also Mark Yale of Ormond Beach, Florida. We would also like to thank our Faith Foundation partners and viewers like you for making these programs possible. Yes. Okay, anything in closing? Well, I'd like to pray for you all. Yes. And and dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for our viewer today, Lord. We thank you. We pray you bless them and lead them unto all truth and help them to not be discouraged. But as it says in Psalm 55, to cast all your burden on the Lord because he will not suffer the righteous person to be moved. God, we pray for a healing of health problems. We pray for healing of addictions and deliverance from addictions. We pray for a blessing upon these viewers and give them your peace. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And we hope that this will help you to know what to do when you don't know what to do. Yeah. So thank you and God bless thank you. Bye-bye.